of BB Fahurier and blessings to the ancestors. It's D1 here with a new video where I'm going to be focusing on recent events going on in the motherland. I have several in-depth thoughts and concerns regarding the Sahel coup countries and, and I'm also going to share my comments regarding the proxy war in Congo and in the Sudan civil war. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. To start off, I'm going to address the activities going on in the Sahel region first and then discuss the Congo and Sudan as both of which is, is partially applies to what I'm going to say to the Sahel region anyway. A general background of what's been happening in the Sahel region is there are a series of coups that happened approximately in 2020 across the region where neo-colonial puppet leaders or administrations have been overthrown by military juntas with popular support by African people and local citizens. The former leaders were seen as collaborators with their former colonial master in France, who continued their exploitation of their former African colonies, resources, and economic control over existing infrastructure in Francophone countries, which has been the cause of the dire living conditions amongst the people for decades post-independence. This led to the rise of notable coup governments such as Mali's Asimi Goche, Burkina Faso's Ibrahim Traore, and Niger's Mohamed Bouzoum with popular support. Conversely, I must also mention that there are other coups of note without relatively the same popular support. For example, as seen in Guinea, which is led by a military junta, but has been relatively politically neutral in regards to France, and a coup in Gabon, which brought the end to a 50-year-plus reign of the Bongo family, only to be replaced by a family relative as its head of state, who maintained deep ties with France. The main focus of today's video is going to be the main three Sahel countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, where popular support has been the strongest. In 2024, we've seen them exit the ECOWAS bloc and form in the Sahel Confederation, which is a strategic economic, political, and military alliance to pursue mutual economic development with the main focus addressing the region's security threats from Arabian jihadists and Islamic terrorism. Now, I have several concerns about the long-term viability of this union, because as a student of history, with my studies of African history and being familiar with geopolitics, the challenges of these military junctures is going to increase as they're surrounded by Western proxies and neighboring African countries who are openly collaborative with hostile Western powers such as France, whose position in West Africa is gradually under threat. While I understand that the fight against the Arabized jihadists should be the top strategic priority to protect the citizens, Dependence on Russian military equipment should not be the long-term goal. Developing the Sahel bloc industrial capacity should be the eventual long-term goal economically. The reason for this is because by industrializing, it will help the region's dual issue of security and addressing the material needs of its people. Having an industrial base will enable the region to create jobs locally in member countries, which its benefits will trickle down to the people in the form of affordable products to be purchased or for trade and give the region the technical abilities to produce its own weapons to fend off the jihadists at home and potential neighboring threats as I will expand on later. Using this dual track plan, I believe the military juntas would be able to continue fighting off the jihadists with current available military technology available from the Russians and from outside sources and work amongst each other to form an industrial plan to become eventually self-sufficient. But before they can do this, there's other internal factors that needs to be considered. Consolidating political control is going to be important because one of the consequences of inheriting a neo-colonial economy that dominated by French interests at the local levels Local African oligarchs who individually or whose families has been entrenched and benefiting within the heights of the economy can be and will be a long-term strategic threat toward any industrial plan to be implemented or even ongoing military operations against Arabized jihadists. To explain further, these local African oligarchs whose ties to France likely stretch back decades even before the Sankara era, will likely continue to covertly align or support local French interests in the form of economic sabotage, for example, increasing inflation or limited the job availability within the job market, or assist in coup attempts within the military junta themselves, as seen recently with the assassination attempts on Chorori of Burkina Faso and other member countries. This is relatively easy for them because the CFA franc being linked to France's currency, and the point I already made earlier about the pre-existing French control of the local economy and infrastructure. The military junta must keep this in mind concurrently while dealing with the very real and present threat of Arabi jihadists, who I believe are allegedly funded by Western interests. So whether they have to drive out the local African oligarchs or neutralize them, the brothers must be aware of this threat to avoid internal disputes 
which tend to polarize and turn military regimes into reactionary and outright dictatorships. The positive aspect of the Sahelian nation is that they do have natural resources within their borders that can be traded amongst each other to get the necessary forex or capital to finance its industrial base. The challenge is finding or training local citizens to execute this development while having political power and the security capability to defend against the jihadists that seek to destabilize the region. Geopolitically, another concern for the Federation is the neighboring countries who are often aligned with Western interests such as Senegal, Ghana, Benin, and others who may be incentivized to cooperate with Western powers by closing borders which prevents trade and access to the sea, or relocating Western military bases in neighboring countries, or be used as proxies to wage war such as what happened when the Nigerian president threatened to invade Nigeria over his recent coup in 2023. Or another recent example where Ivory Coast was reported to be welcoming a French warship off its coast. On the economic front, in Burkina Faso, outside of being a significant gold producer, which can be a store of value that can be converted later for forex, its main internal resources such as zinc, copper for various materials such as electrical or construction equipment, which is key in the creation of fertilizers for farming and food, can be also converted industrially for dual use process in Niger, its large deposits of uranium can be used to produce nuclear-powered energy reserves that can provide locals with power and electricity in their home, power industrial development, and have enough to export to members to health countries or the rest of the continent for profit. Finally, in Mali, also being a significant gold producer, has uranium as described before, including iron ore that can be used for a variety of purposes to produce steel, manganese that can be used in battery production, and lithium that powers the majority of our computer and smartphone technology in the modern era. In cooperation with each other, these materials can be used for dual purpose to industrialize and provide long-term security for the Sahel region. It can serve as a model for the rest of the continent and also transition to my next topic, which is the Congo. The Congo, which has been under persistent attack by foreign powers, mainly the West, by the sponsorship of rebel groups and hostile neighbors such as Paul Gagami's Rwanda and Museveni's Uganda, to serve as proxy threat to keep the Congo destabilized. In recent months, the resurgence of M23 rebels in the East Congo has been supported by Rwanda and Uganda state interests, as alleged in a June 2024 UN report that alleges that they financed these rebels to attack the Congo from the east to extract its strategic raw materials and resources such as gold, diamonds, and timber. In my view, this was part of a dual self-interest strategy of both Kagame and Museveni and Western powers to keep the Congo unstable politically, to keep it open for foreign penetration of Congo's resources as historically seen over recent decades. Western powers such as the United States are the primary supplier of weapons and military gear to Rwandan and Uganda security, which gives them the ability to finance the M23 rebels. Finally, I want to briefly touch upon the current Sudan war, which has been going on since last year. Unfortunately, since independence from the British, Sudan has been frequently destabilized by frequent infighting amongst varying class interests. As a result of British colonialism, Arabized Islamic Africans were pitted against each other against other native African ethnic groups in Sudan as a better way to control their colony. Once independence was achieved, the northern Arabized African elite sought to impose Islamic Sharia law on southern Sudanese Africans, which led to several civil wars and internal conflicts that is too long and needs its own separate video. Upon reading the brother Dwayne Omawale's essay on the Sudan crisis in his book, African Man, it better explained to me the origin of the civil wars in Sudan, the conflict in Darfur, and the factors leading to the succession of South Sudan in the following excerpt. The British colonial government played a significant role in the polarization of Arab and African identities in the Sudan. The fostering of this Arab-African dichotomy has played a significant role in shaping the perspective people have on the various conflicts in Sudan. The reality is that the quote-unquote Arab population in the Sudan is largely made up of Arabized Africans. So the conflict is not a racial one, but an ethnic and cultural one rooted in several divisions that were exploited by the colonial government. The reason why I wanted to touch upon the subject is that the underlying issue within Sudan is a similar continental issue of Arab Islam. I understand that the origin of this present issue comes from British colonialism, but I would argue that this traces back further beyond to the origin of Arab imperialism in Sudan and across Eastern Africa into the north and western parts of the continent. The reason why the British were able to manipulate the Arabized Africans in the north of Sudan 
was due to the pre-existing colonial influence of Arab Islam and their conquest of Egypt and later Sudan during the rise of Islam during the early medieval period. This historical fact seems to be glossed over by many observers, which explains to me at least partially the origin of the jihadist extremists in neighboring Sahel into Central and Western Africa, due to scriptures inside the Quran and Hadith advocating such expansionist aggression. So in my view, it speaks to the overall imperial history of Abrahamic religions and its negative history within the motherland in general, which in the future I plan on doing a more in-depth video on the subject once I complete my studies on these subjects. Ultimately, I believe the final solution for Africa to get rid of these foreign entities and foreign ideologies to exert stability and development across the motherland to address the material needs for African people. Until then, export more proxy wars to continue. Well, I think that's it for today's video. So expect the next video in mid-October where I'm going to be doing a part two to the why I'm not voting video where I'm going to be discussing the, the history of Western democracies and why I consider them largely false and the historical evidence to support my argument. So until next time, a Bibi Fahudie and blessings to the ancestors. The sitting set of my alpha, how much a dollar cost? They tell us stop talking about slavery, but every day we get reminders about the Holocaust.